good morning and thanks for waking up with us here on KRK4. Today, I'm Hunter Hogan alongside Claire Kreitz on this Monday morning, a very busy one at that. Yeah. Starting with some developing news here out of the capital city. Here this morning, we are following a very violent weekend in Pulaski County. A violent weekend in Little Rock. 15 shootings happening in just 26 hours. Hey, Craig and Faith. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. calls this violence unacceptable. More than 15 shootings over the weekend, and LRPD says one man could be connected to many of them. A couple hours later, there was a shooting at a Valero on Mabelville, Mabelville Cutoff. One person was killed, and another was left critically injured. Actions of an individual has left our community shaken. At least 15 shootings across Little Rock this weekend, leaving three people dead and three more injured. I want to point out that we're not by any means saying that all of these are connected, but they are close enough and we're considering uh, the fact that there's a potential for that. The string of shootings started Saturday afternoon a little before 2 near Mabelvale Elementary. A woman told police people in two cars were shooting at each other when her car was hit. The school was hit, but no one inside was hurt. Then one person was injured after a car was shot at on Fraser Pike. And around 7 that night, gunshots were fired on the 900 block of South Rodney Parham. That's where 23-year-old Glenn Finley died. The shooting started again Sunday afternoon around 1. 58-year-old Dwayne Thompson was hit by gunfire on Fraser Pike and 3M Road. He later died. Multiple people were injured after cars were hit by bullets on Interstates 30 and 440. Then police got calls of a person shooting out of their car in West Little Rock near the Big Rock Interchange. They tracked the reports to locations to Markham and Bowman and West Markham. The last of the shootings happened at the Valero on Mabelvale Cutoff. One person died and another injured. This level of violence is unacceptable. And when state police did the hit maneuver over on uh, Roosevelt, was he in that car in that hit maneuver? So, Mr. Davis uh, Jones was in that car and taken into custody as a result of the state police. We put out the alert with the car description and the description of the individual, and they did uh, take him into custody. And I know in one of the pictures, I guess, that was released today, one of the mugshots has kind of got a towel on his head. Was he injured in that maneuver at all or in stuff like that? Bill Bryant, director of the Arkansas State Police. Um, just to kind of give you a little background, we, the trooper first observed him in I-30 in Geyer Springs at the Shell gas station. And at that point, uh, the trooper began following the vehicle and waited to get more uh, mark units on the scene. And then at this time, I'll turn it over to, to Captain Hager, who's the Troop 8 commander, who was out at the scene and viewed the videos. Mike, if you kind of cover the pit and all that. I'm sorry, Captain Hager with Troop 8. And what was your question, I'm sorry? Um, just one of the pictures that was released from the day, he's kind of got this white, I guess, towel or, or napkin or something here on his head. Right. Is he hurt in the, in the maneuver right No, sir. I don't believe there are any injuries reported as a result of that.
Police arrested two people Sunday night in connection to the shootings. 31-year-old Davis Jones has several charges against him, including capital murder. Police are not identifying the second suspect, and they have been released pending the investigation. We do not know at this point what, if, if any motive, uh, is attached to any of this at this point. Now, Jones has another criminal case open against him. In 2016, he was charged with aggravated residential burglary, domestic battery, and criminal mischief, all felonies, and he pleaded not guilty to those charges. Back to you in the studio. Thank you.